Now that you've downloaded the data set and learned about the flanker task, you'll want to look at your data to inspect it for any problems. As you gain more experience looking at these images, you'll be able to judge whether they are minor flaws that can be fixed by pre-processing the data, which we will discuss later, or whether they are major issues that indicate a problem with the scanner. In either case, you will need to look at the data carefully by using the AFNI image viewer. Let's first rename the data set to something that is clear and informative. If the data set has been downloaded to your downloads directory, open a terminal, navigate to the desktop, and type the following. The move command, followed by a tilde, slash downloads, slash the name of the folder that you downloaded. And then flanker. This will rename the folder to flanker and put it on your desktop. As you saw in the previous tutorial, the data set has a standardized structure. Each subject folder contains an anatomical directory and a functional directory labeled anat and func, respectively. And these in turn contain the anatomical and functional images collected during the experiment. This format is known as BIDS, or Brain Imaging Data Structure, which makes it easy to organize and analyze your data. To look at the data, we will be using the AFNI Graphical User Interface, or GUI for short. You can open the GUI by opening a terminal and then typing AFNI from the command line and pressing Enter. This will open a controller window and three viewing windows. If there are no data in the current directory, a dummy data set will be loaded. Close the viewer and then navigate to the sub-08 directory within the Flanker data set. And then navigate into the ANAT folder. From here, type AFNI and then press return, which will open the GUI. By default, AFNI will look for any images in the current directory, such as files in nifty or analyzed format, and load all of them into memory. If there are several other images in the current directory, for example, and you wanted to load only the anatomical image into the AFNI viewer, you could type AFNI followed by the name of the image you want to load. Inspect the image by clicking around in one of the viewing windows. Notice how the other viewing windows and crosshairs change as a result. This is because MRI data is collected as a three-dimensional image, and moving along one of the dimensions will change the other windows as well. If you have highlighted a window by clicking on it, you can scroll continuously through that viewing plane by using the mouse wheel to scroll up or down. You may have noticed that this image doesn't have a face, which has deliberately been removed in order to ensure the subject's anonymity. If you were to observe that other parts of the brain were missing, however, or if there were distortions in the image, in other words, if you saw artifacts, you should make a note of this. Some artifacts are due to bad data quality or movement or because of scanner malfunctions. Click on the link below for examples of artifacts to look out for. When you are done looking at the anatomical image, you can load in other images while staying in the same directory. Click on the Read button from the menu at the top of your screen. And then in the Directory sidebar, double click on the file path that ends in two dots, which indicates the directory above the current directory. Then double click on the Funk directory in the Sessions sidebar. This loads all of the images in the Funk directory, which you can then browse in the AFNI viewer. This new image also looks like a brain, but it's not as clearly defined as the anatomical image. This is because the resolution is lower. It's typical for a study to collect a high-resolution T1 weighted or anatomical image and lower-resolution functional images, which are lower resolution in part because they're collected at a very fast rate. One of the trade-offs in imaging research is between spatial resolution and temporal resolution. Images collected at higher temporal resolution will have lower spatial resolution and vice versa. Many of the quality checks for the functional image are the same as with the anatomical image. Watch out for extremely bright or extremely dark spots in the gray or white matter, 
as well as for image distortions, such as abnormal stretching or warping. One place where it is common to see a little bit of distortion is in the orbital frontal part of the brain, just above the eyeballs. There are ways to reduce this distortion, but for now, we will ignore it. Another quality check is to make sure there isn't excessive motion. Functional images are often collected as a time series. That is, multiple volumes are concatenated together into a single data set. You can rapidly flip through all of the volumes, like pages in a book, by clicking on the Graph button, and then by pressing the V key. You can stop at any time by pressing the space bar. Note any sudden jerky movements in any of the viewing panes. During pre-processing, we will quantify how much motion there was in order to decide whether to keep or to discard that subject's data. When you're finished looking at the data here, click on the red X button in the top left of the controller window, which will close both the controller window and all of the viewer windows. In the next tutorial, we will learn more about how to pre-process our data to remove artifacts and improve the image quality using AFNI's ubersubject.py command.